us, go to our website, and let us know why you th why we should give you these tickets. So we're going to talk about what those tickets are a little bit later in the show, so stay tuned. But let's um, hear more from you guys in the studio. Wait, okay, you me thank on the head, you. Like, what are we giving away? <laughs> I don't know, but I, I told Dad. you, surprises. Okay, surprises everybody. But, okay. okay. We do have a surprise. I mean, he's not really a surprise. We knew he was going to be here. We're talking today with John Gorman, who I uh, talked about before and said that he has this really great book about the uh, good days of radio. And right. uh, Anthony right. has a copy of the <laughs> book. And it's called The Buzzard. Yeah, it's about... Uh, the buzzard, the the radio station W M M S. Yes, let's okay. Let's not go that far too soon. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Let's talk to John. How you doing? Hi, John. Great, great. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I'm so great to be back. To have Don't you get too on. comfortable in that chair. Oh, now. this I, this is so comfortable. I just want to, you know, <laughs> can I stay here? This is so comfortable. <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah see if we can make some stay there. After, <laughs> after the show is over. We want to get all of the information out of you that we can, so we want you to be comfortable. Well, I'm but, very comfortable. Okay, <laughs> let's let's talk about you, John. Um, you know, you you talked before that you came here in 1973 to do radio, mm -hmm. but before that, where were you and where'd you grow up? Uh, I was born and raised in Boston, and uh, worked at a lot of radio stations in uh, in and around Boston, Boston suburbs. Okay. And then it was just an opportunity to. Uh, really take over a troubled radio station mm -hmm. and uh, I jumped at the chance and I had never been to Cleveland before but it seemed interesting I looked on the map and okay there it is there's a body of water okay <laughs> and know, when you first came you mm -hmm. were living in East Cleveland yeah when I first moved I, I uh, lived in East Cleveland uh, right at uh, you know Cliffview and Green mm -hmm. in, in that area and then my s the second place I lived was also in in East Cleveland. It was on Coventry, but it was in the East Cleveland side of Coventry. Okay, so hey, you, a shout out to East Cleveland. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, here's the question. I just want to see, how did, we, how did you even get started in the whole business of, of broadcasting? What brought well, you to that career? I never wanted to be on the air. You hear my voice? I'm not really, I don't have the kind no. of voice to be on the air. But I, I loved radio. Growing up, I used to listen to radio. It was like part of my life was the soundtrack. But I always wanted, I always wanted to run a radio station. Ever since I was a little kid, I mean, I, I used to, uh, in fact, there was one time I took two turntables and put them together and, like, you know, made my little pirate radio station. So, I mean, I always wanted to have something to do with radio uh -huh. and just had really uh, the, the, the Cleveland coming to WMS was just a very lucky break for me because of the right place, the right time, the right city. And so why WMMS? Uh, well, the station was the bottom of the ratings. It was, it was one of those situations where... Anything goes, nothing else was working, so let's just try anything. And what we did is we put a good rock and roll station on the air. We had, I had a great team. I had one of the greatest group of people that I, I, I could ever work with. I had great support as far as management left us alone because they were concentrating on other things. Okay. And it's amazing what you can get done when you don't have so management I'm hanging on you all the time. You said you came to Cleveland. So where were you from that brought you to Cleveland? Uh, I was in Boston before okay, I came okay, to Cleveland. Okay, yeah. you were in Boston and radio there. Right. But I read about your 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 your, your little pirate radio oh, yes. station. So tell us about ooh, how that ooh, whole ooh, thing ooh. started and what happened to it oh. eventually. Well, it was one of those little things. It was one of these <laughs> kits you could buy that you could broadcast at a radio in your house. And I realized if you add more wire and you do a little few little electronic tricks, you could go a few city blocks. And that's what I did. Okay. And the way I got caught was my father was watching a, he was listening to a Red Sox game on radio and I was looking at a person living across the street who was also watching a Red Sox, uh, listening to the Red Sox game on the radio and started to cut into the frequency and saying, hey you bum and this and he's looking at his radio's <laughs> talking to him. <laughs> and so we're having fun, a friend of mine, we're looking out the window and watching this guy seeing his radio talk to him and he was a Polish immigrant so I mean it was, you know, he he didn't know English that well, but yet this, this radio is talking to him. It doesn't make sense. Then I turn to my look in the doorway, and there's my father. He was listening to the Red Sox uh -huh. game, too. So Dad and, had to shut it down, And right? my father was, you know, that was my version of the FCC shutting me down. Oh, uh, <laughs> that, was, that was such a great story. So, so let's talk about some of those days when you were at WMMS during this heyday, during the time when it yeah. was the buzzard, and, I mean, it was all over. I mean, you all had employ some of the greatest marketing techniques to, to let everyone know wh whether you like rock and roll or not you knew of this station mm -hmm. WMS 100 uh, FM 100 yeah. 100.7 we call it 101 
And then when digital came along, we start used the exact frequency, which was 100.7. So what kind of marketing techniques did you all use? Uh, actually, we didn't have any money to promote a market, so we had to do it the old-fashioned way. I mean, we, uh, you know, we sold T-shirts, and the T-shirts became walking billboards. People liked the T-shirts. They put them on. We made a profit on those. We gave the uh, extra money to the free clinic, all the profits from the sales, because at the time the free clinic was, you know, just getting started. I, I, you know, we're just beyond University mm -hmm. Circle in that area, and uh, then we started doing bumper stickers. What we do is we'd sell the back of the bumper sticker, so it didn't cost us anything to print the bumper sticker. And so a lot of what we did really didn't cost us any money. It was like this grassroots, almost underground promotion <laughs> and marketing that we did, and it paid off. Let's talk about some of these pictures. Uh, real quick, here's, I guess, this is your office? That's, uh, that's my office, and I'm uh, standing in front of me as Denny Sanders. And believe me, that is the whole size of the office. Uh, that man is a villain. You'll have to read the book to find out why. But that, that man is a villain. Now, now you in the book also, <laughs> while we're looking at the, at the photos, you um, yeah. talk about yeah. these were really yeah. crazy days of uh, oh, sex and, and, stuff, yeah. and rock and roll, right? Right. <laughs> Who is this here? Uh, that's Father Guido Sarducci, Don Novello. Oh, He's yeah. beyond Saturday Night okay. Live. Oh, right. uh, this is the, the staff of the station with, in the center, sitting down, is Bruce Springsteen. And that was the first time that Springsteen came to, okay. uh, oh. first and only time he came to WRMS. Well, where is this at? This is the old Cleveland Municipal Stadium. It was a World Series of Rock concert where 88,000 of our closest friends came Wait, to I see our show. I see people in the studio just nodding their head. <laughs> they were oh, yeah. Uh, this is, He's this taking is us Mick, back. Uh, this is Mick Fleetwood uh, in, in my office. It was a situation, MMS was the kind of place I never knew. These are the Isley brothers. And this, I, I mean, I love the Isleys. And uh, th this was the period of time when they were doing Fight the Power and Who's That Lady? And uh, that's when... Uh, uh, that kiss? Oh, yeah. That's Gene Simmons and oh, members gosh. of the staff. Wow. Yep. This Jeez. does just look like some great times. Yeah, and there's Mr. T. <laughs> <laughs> there's Mr. T with Jeff and Flash who uh, did mornings on the station. And uh, he, he was an amazing character. This, this was actually before the A-Team. That's when Rocky... Okay. Uh, 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 which what? Rocky two, one three, four. Them. One of them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rocky. Whoa! Thanks for sharing those with oh, us. My but pleasure. we got to plug the book before yeah. we get out of here. Okay. Yeah. Why this book at this time? Yeah. Uh, the time was right. That's all I can say. The the, I, I, the publisher called and said, "You want to write a book?" I said, "Yes." <laughs> and and it was a fun book to it was a fun book to write. It's uh it's it's how available. many pages? I'm sure it'll go uh, by real quick. 300, I guess. Or okay, so. okay. <laughs> it's, you know, it's yeah. available any bookstore in the Cleveland area, Amazon.com, and there's also a website attached to it. It's buzzardbook.wordpress.com. And you think anybody can get a lot out of this book? You don't have to be like a, 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 a radio no. person or a radio yeah. fan from, from no, that it's, time. No, it's really the story of, it's, it's, a lot of the story has to do with marketing and promotion okay. and, and fulfilling a dream. That mm -hmm. if you really believe you can do something, you can pull it off. And also, it's all about how to break the rules effectively. Okay, I'm sure a lot of people will be interested in that. But John, it has been such a pleasure. I wish we oh, had more to be time. Here. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have you back sometime. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, and now we are going to uh, take it over to Melanie and uh, see what she's got. All right, thanks, Stephanie. 